My name is Robert Krensik, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Neurosurgery and the Center for Neuroregeneration at Houston Methodist Research Institute and Academic Institute. So my laboratory is a neuroscience laboratory, and what we study are ways to generate tools, technologies, and therapeutics to help promote regeneration of the human nervous system after cases such as injury and disease. So in this talk, I'm going to review our recent publication entitled Assessing GQ-GPCR-Induced Human Astrocyte Reactivity Using Bioengineered Neural Organoids. So in order to study the human brain in the laboratory, we need a good experimental model system. So currently, the state-of-the-art, or traditional approaches, includes using human pluripotent stem cells which are cells that we reprogram from patient skin or blood cells, and these cells can then generate any cell type in the nervous system. We differentiate these to neural stem cells over time, and then we further differentiate these into neurons. And these are very useful for experimentation uh, over the past 10 to 20 years, but there's definitely still caveats with this approach, and my laboratory aims to develop new technologies to make this whole approach more reproducible and accurate to model the human nervous system. So as we know, the human adult brain is multicellular, the cells are mature, and they're highly active. So they're constantly active, and we'd like to recapitulate this activity within our experimental dish in the laboratory. For example, the brain contains more than just neurons. It also contains star-shaped cells called astrocytes, and we know these astrocytes are very important to maintain health and homeostasis during brain activity. Thus, a better experimental platform for our studies would be to include astrocytes to have, to have high density culture systems containing multiple cell types and to include neural activity within the platform. So that's what we sought to do in this publication. And briefly, our approach which we call microassembly of bioengineered rapid all-inducible neural system, or microbrains, is to take these human pluripotent stem cells and genetically engineer them so we can rapidly and directly produce specific cell types such as neurons and astrocytes. And once we have these post-mitotic mature cell types, we can combine them together in these three-dimensional aggregate cell cultures, which are referred to as spheroids or organoids, and we find by including astrocytes, in our case, we can easily generate thousands reproducible organoids, which we call asteroids, which, which recapitulates the cellular complexity and the morphological complexity of cells within the human brain. Next, what we wanted to do was to incorporate methods to stimulate these cells or activate them as a model for neural modulation. So to do this, we use several approaches. We took the human pluripotent stem cells and we genetically engineered them to express genetically encoded tools so we could directly differentiate them into, for example, astrocytes by overexpressing these transcription factors, SOX9 and NFIA. And we also included genetic encoded tools for activation. In this case, we use a chemogenetic approach. This entails expressing transgenes that produce a synthetic receptor this is a G protein coupled receptor that is selectively activated in the presence of specific drugs, for example, CNO. And you can see on the bottom right, this is a calcium imaging of these cells. When we apply this drug CNO, you get this robust upregulation of intracellular calcium concentrations. So this validates that the system works, that we can selectively activate these cells with this drug. And then what we could do is take these cells, and in the video above, you can see that we can reconstruct a three-dimensional human neural tissue using this microbrains approach, so we can selectively stimulate the astrocytes within this three-dimensional tissue. On the other hand, it would be great if we can also specifically modulate or stimulate neurons using a different approach. So to generate these excitatory neurons, we overexpressed a transcription factor called neurogenin, and this rapidly produces excitatory neurons but in addition, we included an optogenetic system. So this is a genetic encoded tool that has the cells produce a light-gated ion channel 
So in the presence of light, in this case blue light, you can open up these ion channels and allow ions to flow into the cell and activate the neurons. So on the bottom right, you can see, for example, these neurons plated on multi-electrode arrays. In the presence of light, you can get a robust activation of the cells indicated by the spike activity. And above demonstrates we can take these same neurons and we can generate these asteroids with them. And then we can use this system to stimulate the entire neural network at the same time. So what we wanted to do with the system is to understand what's the consequence of neuromodulation. So our approach was to modulate these brain cells either acutely within a few hours or to chronically activate them over several days. And then we used a combination of different profiling techniques to understand the transcriptomic response by looking at gene expression, by using proteomics to understand what type of proteins were produced after stimulation. And our conclusion is that mild stimulation of these neural networks is beneficial. So we can induce these cells to produce proteins that are known to be important for synaptic connectivity, or which would be beneficial for neuro regeneration. And then on the other hand, we found if you chronically overstimulate these cells over um, a, a time period of days, that this has detrimental potential. Uh, specifically, we saw a neuroinflammatory response and a fibrotic-like glial scar activation. So why this is important is for inducing neuromodulation in the clinic with electrical stimulation, magnetic, or drugs, et cetera, we have to be careful. We know that mild stimulation is beneficial, but overstimulation may have detrimental consequences. And this system allows us to understand that process. So another conclusion from the study is that we validated that our microbrain's approach is a rapid and reproducible platform for things such as neuromodulation, drug screening, and disease modeling. So I'd like to thank our funding sources and talk about our future directions. So this includes several projects, including using these microbrains as a model for Alzheimer's and aging research. And we're testing new therapeutics to see if we can selectively target cell types within human tissue. We also have a project for cancer research where we're incorporating brain cancer cells within the system and studying how this neural tissue affects growth and migration of cancer cells. And we have another project where we're modeling Parkinson's disease by using cells that have genetic mutations similar as the patients and try to understand how these mutations affect neural activity within this human tissue. So this study can be read more about in this um, online news publication on the right. And also, I can refer you to our website and Twitter page for more information and to contact me anytime with more questions. Thank you.